Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Pastor Bruce Grants from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Roy, Utah. Coming to you from my kitchen with my daughter Lexi. Bringing you another confirmation class tonight. We're looking at Martin Luther again. You know what? Today is Martin Luther's birthday. Born on November 10th, 18, 1483, not 1843. Ooh, dyslexia. 1483. That is five, 537 years ago. Is that correct? Wait a second. Yeah, 537 years ago. He nailed his 95 theses to the Wittenberg Castle Church door on October 31st. 1517, igniting the Reformation. Lexi, I have a question for you right out of the box. What happened one day after Martin Luther was born? He was baptized. What? Say he it. was baptized. You get the toaster oven. That was really a great answer. He was <laughs> baptized. And His we father already have the toaster oven. We've got a toaster and oven. And a working Con oven. Convection oven. So anyhow, so yes, Martin Luther was baptized immediately as an infant. Our theme verse is Romans 1, oh, 7, wait, wait, wait. What, Who else's birthday is it today? Oh, Shirley Aguilar's birthday. Shirley Cooper Aguilar's birthday. Happy TV. birthday, Happy Shirley. birthday, Shirley. Yay. Yay. We love you. We miss you. And we hope you're doing well. God bless. Uh, theme verse. Let's see. Let's read it. Romans 1, 17. The one who is righteous shall live by faith. How do we live? By faith. By faith, that's right. <laughs> that's the way we live. It's agency by faith. All right, let me just get to the next page. Remember one thing, an insignificant monk stood up against the powers of the church and state to tell them they had it wrong. He didn't need money for salvation. What's he referring to there? buy your way into heaven, or out of purgatory, really, not into heaven, out of purgatory and into heaven. A man named John Tetzel was selling indulgences for the papacy in Rome. They were building St. Peter's and Paul Basilica, I believe, and which still exists today. And um, what they said was that those souls that were in purgatory, that if you gave so much money, you could purchase so many indulgences, which would shorten the sinner's time, the loved one's time in purgatory. Purgatory is not a biblical doctrine. There is no in-between heaven and hell. Jesus did not make a partial payment for our sins. He paid for all our sins. So we do not go to purgatory to purge ourselves or for our sins to be purged from us. Jesus did it all. Jesus paid it all. You're probably too young to remember the hymn. Jesus paid it all. So God's righteousness was a free gift given to be accepted by undeserving sinners through Christ. Like, see, if I have a gift I want to give you and you don't take it, is it a gift? Is it your gift? Uh, I haven't given it. You haven't taken it. Oh, right. So it becomes a gift to you when somebody gives it to you. Somebody gives it, but somebody has to actually accept it. Actually accept it. Very good. There's a great illustration that I use in sermons. I use it more than once. Can't remember the names of the people. But in 1843 or something, they... Um, guy robbed a train and the penalty for robbing trains was death right that was the, the it was a horrible crime because these trains were going probably into Ogden, Utah you know and they were being robbed by robbers and uh, so they made this crime of robbing trains a capital offense and they would lose their lives for doing it so there was a guy and I can't remember his name who did that and friends beseech the president to offer him a pardon. And the president did that, offered the guy a pardon, and he said he didn't want to take it. So it went before, I don't want to say, I'm not going to get the wrong name of the Supreme Court justice, justices, and the Supreme Court ruled that it's not a pardon, it isn't received. 
So the president could pardon him, but he still had to receive the pardon. And he, because he didn't take it, they executed him. So we have to receive that pardon by faith. And we believe that that is done in the waters of our baptism when we hear the gospel. Uh, we are given the gift of faith in Christ. So Christ's righteousness was a free gift. Nothing we've done for God, what God has done for us in Christ. Meditate in the words of Luther's hymn. We're not going to meditate, but Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power made known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise triumphantly. O comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. And all said, Amen. This is the protesting professor. Famous moments in history. Tetzel comes to Wittenberg selling indulgences. Luther reacts, you can't sell forgiveness. It's a free gift. Oh no, watch me, monk boy. Ooh, ah, as soon as the coin in the money box rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Now, and so Luther nails his 95 theses on the Wittenberg chapel board. And the bats are saying, I guess we will see, won't we? You think anybody will pay any attention to a note tacked on the door? Well, they did. So, he makes a trip to Rome, and after his trip to Rome, the young Luther returned to Wittenberg, confused, frustrated, and angry. Luther was a professor of the church, but he still found him unworthy of God's call, God's love. He was teaching students about the gracious love of God in the Bible, yet he hadn't experienced it for himself. How could he do anything but hate a God who created him imperfect, then demanded perfection? How does it make you feel to think on this thought? Pretty awful. I was raised in the faith tradition that said that. I had to be perfect, but I was imperfect. And so I had to seek forgiveness over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, which we do need to confess our sins daily. But if I didn't get it perfect, I was bound for purgatory, which is a made-up doctrine of the Catholic Church. So, because we don't read it in Scripture. The Black Tower. One night while searching the Scriptures, Luther stumbled upon Romans 1.17. When he read this verse, everything changed. It said that a right relationship with God comes through faith, not through perfection. Could it be that Luther had been looking in the wrong place to find peace with God? Could it be that after all of his futile striving to be holy, sinless, and right in God's sight was a wasted effort? Right? Born anew on a timeline. How do those words make you feel? You see, he was born from anew, not by what he did, but by what God did. It, it, by when he heard the gospel, the just shall live by faith. That's what he read. It's from the Old Testament book, Habakkuk. 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 Yes, that's like it. Habakkuk. No, not Habakkuk. 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 There you go. You got it. You're learning Hebrew now. Habakkuk. It's a common statue. Yes, the sound. It's the same as in Hanukkah. 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 Very, very good. Very good. Yes. So he read Romans 117, uh, the just shall live by faith, and guess what? He understood. It's by faith, not by works. So those words make me feel very good. The fuse is lit. They lit the fuse on the Reformation soon to explode across Europe. Luther, because everybody believed you had to be saved by works. You had to be perfect. You had to be good. You had to do something for God to get saved. If you didn't, you'd go to hell. And what Luther understood was, no, it's not what we do for God. It's what God did for us on the cross through Jesus. He died there to pay for all of our sins. He was buried and raised from the dead for our justification. God the Father accepted the payment Jesus made for our sins. Okay, that's God raised him from the dead. Because it, that was a good sacrifice. A total sacrifice for all of our sins. So Luther finally found this big peace, the righteousness of God was not a standard to live up to, but rather a gift given to undeserving sinners. Given to us in the waters of our baptism, we're clothed with Christ, his righteousness. Our responsibility is not to live up to the impossible demand of perfection, but to accept that God has already done it all for us in Christ. Make sense? Do you see the difference? Uh, 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 um. Okay, well, we'll keep going. 
Pope Leo's indulgence sale. The Pope sent emissaries around the Holy Roman Empire to raise funds. They sold indulgences, certificates promising forgiveness for dead relatives in purgatory. Now, when my dad and I would go to confession in the Catholic Church, after we confessed our sins, and you could say anything, and it was always going to be three Hail Marys, three Our Fathers, three Glory Bees. That didn't matter. That's what it always, always was. I don't know what, where they got that. But after we did that, we prayed those prayers. We would go around to the corner side of the altar, and there were a lot of votive candles. You know the little candles? And they, yeah. would, they would be lit. Okay. And what Dad would do is he would take whatever change he had in his pocket, and he put it into the money box there and then lit a candle for his, I'm sure his father, who had passed suddenly um, when dad was, you know, in his four, early 40s. So, and that's what T Tetzel said, when the coin into the money box flings, so the, the soul from purgatory springs. So it's as though you're buying people's way out of purgatory, this mythical place that doesn't exist, but the Catholic Church sold that to everybody. Everybody bought into it. Because it makes sense that if it's all on me and I don't get to confess all my sins before I die, then I've got to go pay for them somewhere, right? And that place was purgatory, all right? It's a place where the church said, we went for all of our unconfessed sins that weren't forgiven, where we had to pay for them. Which when is, you when you die, it's, that was when saying that Jesus didn't pay at all. Jesus just paid part, you have to pay the other part. We believe Jesus paid it all. We're totally forgiven in Christ. We don't have to pay for our sins. So John Tetzel came to Wittenberg saying, as soon as the coin in the money box rings, that's it, rings, the soul from purgatory springs. So you could buy people out of purgatory into heaven. And people believed it. So uh, it's all about earning your way into heaven, not the grace of God. So Tetzel it was it outraged uh, Luther and his sale of indulgences. The, cities of Witt, the citizens of Wittenberg were paying for a free gift. Jesus, not the church, owned forgiveness and grace, faith, and salvation were God's gifts alone to give. We, didn't, we don't buy them. So Luther was furious. Forgiveness was a free gift from God, not a product for sale by the church. On Halloween day, October 31st, uh, he posted his 95 theses, objections on the chapel door. Well, it wasn't, yeah. That, that's been around then? Yeah, Halloween. Uh, yeah. Probably was. Yeah, it was started in um, in Ireland, in um, Celtic country. Oh, really? I believe that was the mm -hmm. earliest, yeah, somewhere in there. Uh, students translated this protest, mailed it home, and quickly spread it all over the Western the verse, the one who is righteous, say it. The one who is righteous shall live by faith. By faith, by works or by faith? faith. By faith. By faith. And what is faith? What do you think faith is? That uh, you. It's kind of hard to explain. Well, it you, is. part of it you believe in Jesus and. Right. You know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right. that kind of thing. It's belief. Faith is belief. Trust in the promises of God, right? So faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. So we haven't seen heaven, but we believe in heaven. We haven't seen Jesus, but we believe in Jesus, right? So why does somebody have faith in themselves or something? A lot of people have faith in themselves. Or, or another or another person, and that doesn't get you into heaven. Because <laughs> having faith in themselves or another person isn't that like you just believe in them? Oh, that's faith. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You can you have faith in them, trust in them, hope in them. You believe them, right? So that's what we're saying. Faith is. Yeah, it makes sense. Bible time. Uh oh, here we go. Bible time. Um, Find Habakkuk 2.4b. We're not going to find Habakkuk 2.4b. I already told it to you. It says the just shall live by faith. And Romans 1.17 says the just shall live by faith. Okay. Paul, 
quoted verses from the Old Testament in his writings in the New Testament. The one who is righteous shall live by faith. 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 Remember one thing, an insignificant monk stood up against the powers of the church and state to tell them they had it wrong. You didn't need money for salvation. God's righteousness was a free gift. Sorry, why did I go? Why did I hold that? That was just weird. Okay. That's all right. Anyway. Your turn. Was a free gift given to be accepted by undeserving sinners through Christ? Amen. Very good. It was a free gift. And Luther realized this righteousness was not a standard to achieve. We can never achieve it. Christ achieved it. He's the only one. We can accept the free gift. Go as a beggar to cling to the cross of Christ and live in faith that Christ's righteousness can become our own. And it becomes our own in the waters of our baptism through faith in, when we hear the gospel. Do you have a restless faith that drives you to learn more and ask questions? Or are you passive and disinterested? You're, you're inquisitive. You ask questions, right? Mm -hmm. you, you ask questions about uh, uh, different things. Do you have a restless faith that drives you to learn more and ask questions? That? just means you're just inquisitive. You want to know. You want to learn. Yes. Yeah, you do. You're, you're not disinterested at all. So Any, anybody that can sit through my sermons is not disinterested, right? You don't fall asleep during my sermons. Have, have you? <laughs> no. I didn't see you asleep. It's weird because usually on Saturday nights I only got six hours because I go to bed so late. But I'm like, usually people who get six hours are like, hmm, like incredibly tired. But I'm like, like a normal human being. Okay. So, you're like, you're awake for like, my sermons? Like they got like 12 hours of sleep. Or not yeah. really 12 hours, but like eight hours. You're just excited to be in the house of the Lord? Is that it? Uh. I don't know, maybe Jesus is telling me, wake up, wake up, child. <laughs> Luther was assigned to teach the following courses at the University of Wittenberg. Old Testament church history, Psalms and Romans, seven deadly sins and some that aren't so deadly. Pottery and small engine repair. Wait, what? what was he? We didn't cover this, so I don't know why they would. It was, he was assigned to teach B, Psalms and Romans. But I've taken this course like 10 times, so I've been confirmed more than once. Duke Frederick, Luther's friend and protector, boasted the largest collection of what commodity that could rescue you from 1,443 years of purgatory if you paid to see and adored them. What? Huh? Hold on, let's see. Holy grails, holy relics, holy rollerblades, girlfriends. Holy roller Okay, boasted the largest collection of what commodity and that could rescue you from purgatory. Well, it's not rollerblades. It's not girlfriends. So it's relics or grails, right? What are grails? Grails are like a, 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 the holy grail would be like the cross, a crucifix. You may know, hold on to a cross. A relic would be any artifact of a saint or a sacred place. So you might have the, a relic of... Um, when I went to uh, school at St. Dorothy's Catholic School in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania, St. Dorothy, uh, we had, I think we had a relic or two of hers in the church under glass. I may be wrong. I may be making this up. But, you know, like, uh, like a piece of jewelry or, or a, uh, a, a maybe rosary beads that she had or something, you know, that would connect... So, I don't know if it's grails or relics. I would say relics. Okay. Yeah, relics. relics. I've, had this. I've taken this course ten times. Have I told you? Yes, you uh, have. Okay, good. What Bible verse changed Luther's life forever? Cleanliness is next to godliness? That's not a Bible verse. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> Romans 1.17, the one who is righteous shall live by faith. Ephesians 2.8, for by grace you saved through faith. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 50, verse 9, I will take no bull from your house. Uh, Which one is it? Which? I'm just studying my Bible verses more. Well, what, verse did, what was our theme verse tonight? Uh, I don't know, you keep scribbling your mouth. <laughs> Remember that 
Jeff. The one who is righteous shall. Uh, uh, so which one is it? So it's the the top A. A, very good. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> what did Pope Leo the Tenth do to raise cash for the new St. Peter's Cathedral? Install a jacuzzi in the Pope suite. Uh, boy. Opened a fast food chain called Popeyes. Uh, <laughs> offered rides in the Pope Mobile. Now that would be cool. The Pope Mobile is cool. And sent people out to sell forgiveness of sins through indulgences. Dude, because all Dude. the other ones are stupid. stupid. That's right. Very good. You're learning how to take multiple choice tests. Mm -hmm. An indulgence was a document from the Pope guaranteeing forgiveness of sins you're already committed. Forgiveness is sins you might one day commit. Forgiveness is sins for your dear departed relatives in purgatory. All of the above in a rather clever fundraising idea. Hmm? All of the above in a rather clever fundraising idea. Try to try to plug in here. Remember, we always said when it's all of the above. Oh, it's all, it's the, all of the above. Oh. There you go. Very good. John Johan Johan. I sorry. Johan Tetzel's actual. Johan, would, how would you say to the guy, Johan or A hey, hey, Johan? Hey, Johan. Or, yo, 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 Johan. I don't know how you do it. Anyhow, that must have been hard for his. Uh, can you think of the kids making fun of him for his name? Yo, 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 Johan. I don't know. It's gotta be weird. Then they started calling him Yo Yo. And that has its ups and downs, you know. Anyhow. Oh, man. Oh, Say yo a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so indulgences, buy or fry. There you go. You buy or fry these indulgences. That wasn't his sales pitch. <laughs> uh, they're not just for living folks anymore. As soon as the coin in the money box rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Or do you, as soon as the coin in the money box rings, I'm rich and you're stupid. <laughs> so we don't think it's the do we? That's a terrible sales pitch. <laughs> Fire fry, fire fry. That's pretty close there. Fire fry. That, that's close. C. C is the coin. As soon as the coin in the money box rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Not true. This is false. But that's what he was selling. Luther responded by nailing ninety-five theses to the castle church. Not, not nailing ninety-five Reese's pieces. But was Halloween? I mean, maybe they gave a lot of Reese's pieces out in Wittenberg. <laughs> that Halloween. What do you think? No, maybe not. Nearly 95 fleeces to the door. <laughs> Staple gun in Tetzel's mouth shut. <laughs> That's kind of rude. <laughs> Come over here, Tetzel. <laughs> His mouth's nailed shut. What do you think it was? The Reese's Pieces? I'm going for the Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Me too. No, I think, I think it's the A95 fleeces. Okay. Yeah, that's really all right, Luther hoped his 95 Theses would create the Protestant Reformation, create a debate on campus, create a name for himself in a fat publishing contract, create a new religion. He didn't, he wanted, oh, he didn't want, he wasn't looking for a reformation, he just wanted a debate. Okay, then. I think. Okay, then. Maybe a publishing contract, book, maybe a movie, maybe a podcast. What? Maybe a web channel, maybe his own web, uh, website. Podcast? Maybe his own website. What, what? Oh, wait a second. This was in 1530. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Create a debate on campus. There we go. Indulgences are not found in the Bible. 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 All of the above, but can still be purchased today. The Vatican gift shop just outside says St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. <laughs> Remember when it says all the above? It's all of the above. What? <laughs> you can purchase them today at St. Peter's Gift Shop. Yeah. Purchase they have a lot of keys there they sell, too. But anyhow, that's all another story. Oh. All right, Romans 117 means yeah. if you want to be righteous, live next door to a girl named Faith. Everyone has fallen short of perfection except pastors and Oprah. Amen. Those right in God's sight live by faith in Christ's righteousness on their behalf. Jesus loves getting gifts. Hmm. Um, it, it's probably C. It's probably C. Wait, not probably. It is it C. It is C. That's right. Very good. Oh, thank goodness. There was a lot of questions there. Then they were hard. 
Thank well, you, Nadine. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, now we're in the weakest faith. Now we've got to come up with the word. My back's starting to kill me, so. In German, Schwarze Tim. Schwarze Tim. What the heck? I don't know. I don't even know. That was in the German accent. The place where Luther stumbled upon Romans 117, a verse that mentioned God's righteousness coming by faith apart from good works. First word is a color. Second word rhymes with power. Ooh. Power? Tower. Power. Tower. And the first word is a color. Yes. So the word is tower. And he was studying in the black tower. Yes. Remission of part or all of the temporal and especially purgatorial punishment. In Luther's day, a certificate purchased that guaranteed forgiveness of sins. The selling of these really upset Martin Luther. These certificates can still be purchased today at the Vatican. They are called what? Starts with an I. Ends with Jinses. <laughs> They're not in smart Jinses. They're in dull Jinses. Indulgence. Let Luther's list of just under 100 objections with the practice of indulgences. They were all nailed to the Wittenberg door. Let Luther hope this would spark a debate. 95 followed by a word that rhymes with Reese's. 95. Pieces. Uh, pieces. <laughs> pieces. Oh. Pieces. Pieces, actually. Yeah. It's theses. Oh, that was funny. According to Catholic theology, a place where souls can be purged prior to heaven, an intermediate state after death. It's where some believe you get fit for heaven, and your indulgences have been bought and paid for, you won't be here for long. Remember, you get purged of your sins there. It is called, what? Purgatory. Purgatory, very good. Alteration of Middle English, right-wise, morally right or justifiable, state of being pure or holy, Free from guilt or sin. Right. Righteous? Righteous. Very good. Righteous. Say, Righteousness. I was going to say, like, uh, say. Oh, we're done. The weakest thing. We're uh, done? Well, I think. Let's see. Now the blessing. May God's grace, God's strong word and faith be yours this day. Mark the sign of the cross on your forehead. May they live in your heart, head, flow from your heart. May God bless the world through you. And now, with my other kiddos, Gracie and Mackie, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together to finish up the lesson. Don't forget to do your faith five. You can talk about your highs and lows, the theme verse, Romans 1, 17. And uh, Mackie and Gracie are all going to get in here with us as we say. Am I in the frame? Is everybody, in the frame? Everybody's in the frame. Everybody's been framed in this family. All right. So here we go. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Mackie, can you put your uh, Red Hot Cheetos down while we say the Lord's Prayer? Because I, I hate those things. Right. Okay. Oh. I need my voice to be here. Okay, it'll be heard. All right, let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Happy birthday, Miss Shirley. Happy birthday, Miss Shirley. Prayers of the people tomorrow night live at 7 o'clock. And then don't forget, worship this Sunday at our Xavier Lutheran Church. And happy birthday to Mark Norris the other day. I am, yes. Mark Norris' oh, birthday as well. Oh. We love you. Take care. Have a great rest of the happy night. Birthday. Bye, guys. We love you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.